The Big Five Divorce Myths. I'm Susie Miller, your alternative divorce guide. Myth number two. I have to fight for a good settlement. I have to fight for what's fair. True or false? False. It's often the case, particularly for for mothers, that they may fear that by using mediation, that somehow that they'll have to compromise and they're not going to get as much money, um, which is important because you've got a house, you have children, money is a massive issue when you're going through divorce, quite understandably. So there is this myth that if you if you somehow sit and have a, a pro an, in discussion with your ex, uh, facilitated by a mediator, that you'll be pushed into making concessions that would not be ultimately best for you and the children. This is not logical if you stop to think about it. Anything that is mutually agreed by two people particularly if they've had to have a bit of an argument first and sort it out and they've got um, a trained mediator or collaborative lawyers supporting that process and helping to keep them on track, then what you will usually find, in fact probably always find, is that the settlement that is agreed on, even if you're not 100% happy with every aspect of it, but fundamentally you agree, that is going to be something that carries you forwards into the future. So you're not going to be sitting there in six months' time to think, God, you know, I I can't manage on this money, what was I doing? Because you've only worked out that agreement by going through the figures, by doing the sums with the support of maybe a financial planner or certainly an advisor in finance. So you've done your homework, you've been supported, you've got all the information you need. So the, the... You will not be making concessions. You will be making judgments and agreements based on facts which are not emotionally driven. I feel that a lot of adversarial divorce is emotionally driven. It's not based on facts and and people doing their homework about what they actually need to to go forward. And they need to to be looking also, uh, you know, when you're 72, you need to know that that. you've you've planned right ahead and you consider things like your will your pensions all these things need to be brought in and these are roles in particular for financial planners are are expert in this area and don't make the mistake of assuming that your mediator or your collaborative lawyer or any legal expert that you use is necessarily an expert in financial planning. It's it's an area all of its own, a very, very highly trained one. So again, keep uh, an awareness that you're not giving up anything when you sit down and have a grown-up conversation with someone. And it is perfectly reasonable to want to have uh, professional help to do that because you're in a very emotional and, and frightening situation So it is not unusual that you wouldn't be able to just sit and have that conversation over the kitchen table. If you were getting on that well, you probably wouldn't be getting divorced in the first place. So have confidence that processes like mediation and collaborative law can really hold and support you in creating a future for yourself and your ex that's going to work for both of you. There were also studies in the States, which have shown that women who have used mediation as the part of their divorce, they found that the, the interestingly, their divorce settlements, the amount of money they get uh, through their alimony is statistically higher than when they've been through an adversarial process, which I found quite an interesting statistic. And of course, you haven't then got all the other costs on top, like uh, court fees, barristers, um, just all the the continuing cost that is involved when you're fighting someone. You work together, it will work out more economical. You will have more money left, not just to start your life over again, to perhaps start up a new business, um, to move your life forward in a positive way, but also to spend on university fees or um, spending more time you know, with your family. It's really important to not just think about divorce as a thing of grabbing as much money as I can out of a sense of fear, 
think of it as part of your long-term financial planning. I always suggest that people think about planning their finances in, to be independent and think about it that way rather than just get stuck on the idea of we're getting divorced and therefore we must do this and we must do that. Obviously divorce comes into it if that's what you decide to do, but it's the financial separation which on its own, if you can take some of the emotion out of it and get good expert advice and help, you don't need to be afraid that by using things like mediation, collaborative law, or going together to talk to a financial planner, that you're going to be somehow disadvantaged because that just isn't true.